Joe with Cactus Hat Mushroom, his first video of the channel. And we're going to start with a bang. Sauna steamers. How we use them, how to set it up. Are they good? I don't think so. Here we go. All right, so here we have probably the most popular sauna steamer, and honestly the only one I see anyone able to actually manipulate to run continuously. And I, I can't even pronounce it properly, never could. Stemo it? Uh, Stecmo it? S-T-C-M-O-E-T. -E it's got a naked girl on it, enjoying a, a sauna. Uh, it just says steam bath on the front. If we spin this thing around, this is what you get. This is your inlet pipe for your water. It's a half inch, I believe, C PVC. And I ran an adapter to it just with PEX. Regular old PEX was perfect. And I recommend it using a water hammer resistor because inside this device is a solenoid valve that shuts on and off. And that constant shutting off suddenly creates a water hammer in your pipes and you'll hear knocking, especially if you have an older home with copper pipes. And it can get kind of irritating. And you'll even notice the surges of water throughout your house as you're taking a shower and stuff in some cases. I definitely did. Here you have your steam outlet pipe. Depending on the model you get, and sometimes you do get models that are different from each other, even though it's the same model number. And I'll talk about that in a bit. Very annoying. But what you're looking for typically is you have a th three-quarter inch outlet pipe. I use just a three-quarter inch shark bite and a three-quarter inch PEX that led into the trough, which I'll show in a bit. I found that was the easiest setup. I'm sure you could do it cheaper without using shark bites. And you hear all kinds of nonsense about how PEX and shark bite can't handle the heat. What a load of crap. Use PEX. Use your shark bites if you want to spend that kind of money. But definitely use PEX. It can handle the heat. And I don't want to hear anything different. I, I've been using the same setup for ages I, You know, when I, when I used a sauna steamer. I no longer use a sauna steamer. And I'll show you later the barrel steamer that I built that I feel everybody should use anyways. Here you have the bottom. It's a purge valve. Emergency valve if it gets too hot. The water has somewhere to go and you don't have a bomb. And then a drain valve. You're going to want to drain this unit after every use. I believe the manual says after four hours of cool down. So you have shut the device off and you're going to let it cool down um, for four hours. And then just drain it off. And you're going to definitely 100% want to do this every single time. Because the biggest issue with these sauna steamers is the low quality element. The thing is just a piece of crap. All right, It's a 9 kilowatt element from China that in some cases can last years. I believe Cyrus Lester of Mushroom Maggie's in Louisiana. It's a huge mushroom farm he runs over there. He's been operating on the same couple units, he says, for probably about two years, three years. Uh, very little maintenance. I haven't had that luck. I've bought five of these in the last year before I said enough is enough and built something more permanent thanks to Eric Meyer. Let's open this up. Just pull the cover off normally has screws and then when you open it up this is what you're introduced to it's kind of a mess it's kind of confusing and it's really hard to find information on how to actually rig this up it's out there you have to search the mushroom growing Facebook group um, in some cases even shroomery but it it'll take you hours to scour through information a lot of times and when you message people about it they seem to be kind of vague about it I don't know if it's a liability issue which I get Maybe I get in trouble this for this video. I have no idea. But uh, it's about time, I think, that someone actually just makes a video displaying how to rig this thing up. When you open your sauna steamer, it also comes with a controller. This part, I believe, goes in the shower where you sit naked. These are temperature probes. And finally, you have a controller. Pretty fancy stuff. It's absolute garbage for our case. We're just going to leave that alone. Don't ever need it again. All right, here's a good view of the inside. If you look closely, there's a section here that says 0.5, 1H, 2H. Those are half an hour, one hour, two hours. And in the middle, in the one hour spot, there's a little pin. You're just going to reach in there. Sorry about the big old hairy hand. And if I can get the focus, that's what the pin looks like. Jeez. 
This is now trash to you also. If you notice right beside it, there's a section that says one, two, three. I have no idea what that does. And in some units that I receive, and I've bought five of them, just because they keep breaking, sometimes that pin is there, sometimes it isn't. So I would pull that out too. I've even received units that didn't have pins in either, either slot, almost as if they knew that people are using this to pasteurize their substrate. So we don't have a controller hooked up. We've removed the pin so the unit should run continuously. This button here that says key, this is how you shut it off and on manually. You would normally when the power is getting to the unit, this light here will illuminate red all the time if there's juice to the unit. When you turn it on, the green light and the yellow light turn on also. And you turn it on just simply by pushing this button and you'll hear the water start to boiling from the element turning on. From that point you can start your clock you know, and you, depending how much substrate you actually have in your trough or whatever container you're using is what's going to determine how long you steam for, but it will run continuously from that point forward. Something of note with these sauna steamers, get an electrician to do this. Don't do this yourself. This is high voltage. These units take 220 volts, all right? So you're going to have two hot wires and a ground wired directly to your board. I use an electrician, and he decided to use 8-gauge wire with a dedicated 40 amp breaker. Anytime the breaker started tripping, it was because the heating elements started failing and they started breaking. And then when I would open up the unit, I would pull out the element to find that it had broken yet again. So I would use another sauna steamer that I have for parts, which, which is the reason why I had to keep ordering sauna steamers was because I needed more parts. These things are trash. All right, hopefully this view captures it. In this section, you have the solenoid valve. That's what lets water in and out, and it's measured. And you hear every time the tank starts running low, that'll kick on to allow water in, and once it's full, it turns it off. Your wires are coming through this hole here. And if you notice here, you have a jumper, and here you have a jumper. I had to remove this piece because I was using it for another unit. More on that later. But what you'll do is you put one of your hot wires here, and one of your hot wires here. These jumpers give energy to the middle sections. Your ground wire has to go into this section. Now the 8 gauge ground wire is feels it's, it's way too large for this tiny port. So what my electrician used, I don't even know what this is called, but it joins two ground wires together. So you can use a smaller ground wire to fit in there. So here's something annoying. Here's three of the units that I purchased. Notice anything different between them? They're different sizes. Same model number. This is one of the most annoying things about these sauna units. I would have a backup that I foolishly didn't look at, and when my main one would crap out, I would go get the backup. But the backup was smaller and designed different. It was the same model number. You have no idea if you're going to get this smaller unit when you order it. It just shows up, and you realize that you got screwed and you got a smaller unit. The QA on these machines are garbage. You can't rely on it. Here's why the smaller one sucks if you started up your setup with the larger one. Not only is the unit itself smaller, everything is smaller. All the electrical components, all these little tie-downs, if that's what they're called, are smaller. Here is the larger unit. And I don't know if you can tell the size difference between the two, but it's huge. The ground wire in the larger unit goes here. The ground wire in this one, I believe, attached to this. Not too bad. But you can't fit your 8-gauge wire underneath these. So the unit becomes a brick to you. And sure, you could refund it. But you need to sterilize your substrate now and your unit just broke. You don't have that kind of time, right? So you always need a backup unit of the same size, even though the model is the same. Here's the model number, which I think I forgot to include earlier. Let's spin this around. ST90. I can't begin to tell you how annoying it is, and sometimes scary, when you're relying on these units for your business to operate. You have chefs that need mushrooms every week. And if you have bad water, I guess I do here in Tampa, Florida. I even use a water softener on these units and I'm still going through elements. 
about every two months. It's really infuriating and scary for your business if you can't consistently produce large amounts of substrate to inoculate. And these units work great for some people again, but not for me. As you could see on this smaller unit, because I couldn't get my electrical to work with it because it didn't fit. The eight cage wire didn't fit in there. I'm not an electrician. I don't know how to make those connections. I can't even go to a radio shack because they don't exist anymore to get the parts I need. But the good news is, and I'm going to make a separate video on how to wire it up in case somebody removes this without checking or taking photos first. I took the element out of this one and I was able to fit it into the larger one perfectly, extending the life of the larger one. But I still had to buy another unit to get it because I have yet to find replacement elements that will fit this. As you can see, I now use a barrel steamer. It's got two heating elements in it along with a stainless steel float valve based off Eric Meyer's model. I'll make a separate video on this. This is what I prefer to use now. So here's that water hammer resistor that I recommend using so you can help prevent knocking pipes in your house. This was just a half inch PEX tubing that I used uh, to the intake of the sauna steamer to supply it water. I don't have any current pictures of it because I don't use it anymore but your outlet pipe can also be PEX and I used to pump it through the side here where that duct tape is now into my trough and it would produce more than enough steam to sterilize and the way I did it was I created a tree and I'll, I'll attach a picture somewhere in this video so you can see what I did but I just used shark bites and PEX and I drilled six, sorry, 1 16th uh, inch holes into it all along about every foot through each peck so if you could picture a tree the main comes in there and then it splits off into one two three four pecks all the way down and every foot I drill a 16 uh, 1 16th hole in all four pecks so that helps you evenly distribute the steam throughout your trough and as you can see these rust out even if they're galvanized now I just pump this barrel or the steam from the barrel into the trough straight up no tree turns out the tree is nonsense you don't really even need to do it but if it makes you feel better go for it so to wrap this video up this is a good solution but it's temporary to me unless you have the highest quality water I'm not willing to risk my own business and its consistency to produce mushrooms for chef farmers market stores it's just too risky and it's not a good business model I've had other people tell me that they've had absolutely no issues with these and I envy them because it is cost efficient. You're talking on eBay, it's $180 and I'll try to put a link on the bottom because sometimes the price varies and, and the companies are really odd. If you're going to buy one of these, definitely buy backups like I mentioned earlier. I'd buy up to two. If you're a serious mushroom farmer, you're trying to be serious, you can't chance it. Just buy backup units. Worst case scenario you can pull an element out if you get the smaller unit but you can pull the element out and put it into the larger one and if anyone else has actually figured out why some units are smaller some are larger please mention this below and put a link to help other people figure out if they're even having these problems so far I'm the only one that seems to have uh, noticed this or had this issue maybe they're out to get me but if you have this issue also Post something about it. See if, um, if there's a solution. I'd love to know. I'm done with these things. I wish I never even got involved with them. It was good to get going. It was great to start up and mass producing uh, blocks to, to a larger degree. But there's just such better solutions. The money I spent on these cheap units um, could have paid for two of the barrel steamers that I've made. And I think that's the superior way to go. And honestly, um, anyone who's getting serious with it should just create a barrel steamer on their own. I can replace those elements in two seconds if, if needed. We use the beer brewing fittings. I think they're called sanitary fittings. Easy to clean. That's the way to go. I have backup elements that I could just pull out and plug a new one in if it even breaks. And they're so cheap. You're talking $40 a pop for those elements in some cases. I don't even want to put the effort in to clean the elements that I have to prolong the life because I just don't see the point. I could use that time spent elsewhere. And that's what it's all about is efficiency. And although these units are cheap, 
if you're like me and it doesn't work out, they become expensive. Finally, if there's something I didn't cover, you could just ask me in the comments. I'm going to try my best to be receptive to everybody and, and stay active in the community and, and produce some content that I feel isn't being covered enough, and especially um, content geared towards beginners and, and all the common questions you see on common groups on Facebook like mushroom growing and uh, Lenny Rockwell's mushroom growing for beginning beginners and experts. Uh, that, I think that's going to be the niche I try to cover to help out everybody and make um, complicated processes or at least com processes that appear complicated simple. Take care.